Imagine every ACC team got together and decided to kick Clemson out of the conference because of how dominant they have been in league play. Or if the SEC did that to Alabama, or the Big Ten with Ohio State. It seems unfathomable. Well, back in 2019, St. Thomas, a Division III school located in Minnesota, was kicked out of their conference because of how dominant they had been. What happened next is something that has never happened during the modern era of college sports. Before we get into what actually happened, let's set the foundation surrounding the history of the St. Thomas Tommies football team. The University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota began playing football in the late 1890s and its first official varsity intercollegiate game was played in 1904. They were originally a charter member of the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference in 1920. They won their first conference title in 1922 after going 8-1 and 4-0 in conference. They have since won 21 conference titles, shared and outright. In recent seasons, the Tommies became a dominant force in multiple sports, and on the verge of the 100th year anniversary of the league, it was revealed that the conference had voted in secret to kick St. Thomas out of the league. The Tommies won the MIAC's men's and women's all-sport titles in the 11 years leading up to being voted out of the conference, but the football dominance is what has rubbed people the wrong way. Since head coach Glenn Caruso took over as coach in 2008, the Tommies won six conference titles and played in two NCAA Division III championship games. They routinely blew out conference opponents, racking up nine MIAC victories by 50 points or more in the 2017 and 2018 seasons. According to the Star Tribune, the tipping point for many came when the Tommies beat St. Olaf 97 to nothing in 2017. In 2018, they went 8-2 and 6-2 in conference play, which was good enough for third place in the MIAC, which was their lowest finish in Caruso's 11 years. St. Thomas's athletic director, Phyllis Esten, acknowledged that football gets the most attention, but that the success of the Tommy's entire athletic department prompted the MIAC's decision. The league's presidents for weeks were considering an oust to St. Thomas, all in secret like I mentioned earlier. The university had an undergraduate enrollment of 6,199 people, about two times bigger than the next largest MIAC school at the time. For the vote to succeed, Nine of the 13 schools needed the vote to push the Tommies out of the league. The crazy thing is, according to The Athletic, this vote never actually occurred, it was just an understanding from the other member schools. According to the Star Tribune, St. Thomas, St. John's, St. Benedict's, and possibly Bethel were against the move. Sources also told the Star Tribune during the time period that the presidents were seeking to oust St. Thomas, they were also trying to push the MIAC to change its bylaws, instituting an enrollment cap. According to the president of St. Thomas, the school tried extremely hard to remain in the MIAC and tried to stabilize the conference, but they were basically told the league would cease to exist if the Tommies remained. When reporters tried to get information from the schools who ousted St. Thomas, they declined to comment. The stance continued a few days later, with spokespersons from five school presidents referring to the MIAC statement. St. Thomas' athletic director, who had just taken over the athletic director job that January, spoke on the vote saying it's a sad day. We're disappointed with the outcome. We had hoped to find a way to stay in the MIAC. Ultimately, it was just absolutely inevitable that this wasn't going to happen. All I have to say is the presidents of the schools trying to oust St. Thomas, well, they're cowards. They couldn't look at the founding charter member in the eye and say, hey, we want to remove you from the conference. Hey, we care about all student athletes, so heads up. No, they stabbed not just St. Thomas in the back, but all the young student athletes competing for these teams I get why the schools maybe were concerned about having St. Thomas in the league, especially if there were safety concerns involving the decision. There was no mention about higher injury rates anywhere though. I just think it's terrible the way they went about it. The people in power at these universities went behind a founding member's back to make this decision that was not unanimous. Had they been open about the whole situation, it would have allowed St. Thomas to be better prepared. Instead, they waited for a change in athletic directors. This also ended a major rivalry game for the Tommies with St. John's football. The two football powers have played 88 times, and the 2017 game drew a Division III record crowd of 37,355 at Target Field. The 2019 game was played at Alliance Field. The 19,400-seat stadium in St. Paul is home of the Minnesota United soccer team. Questions were raised about whether this was truly fair for St. Thomas, as before they became so dominant over the decades leading up to this decision, St. John's had dominated the league, winning four national titles and 33 MIAC titles. According to the Star Tribune, St. Thomas won their games by an average score of 63-9. St. John's won theirs by an average score of 44-7. to 
The Tommies exceeded 60 points in 16 of those games, while St. John's only exceeded 60 points twice. When money was brought into question, as of 2017, Carleton had by far the largest endowment of any MIA school at $837 million per the Star Tribune. McAllister, which competed in the MIAC in all sports except football, was second at $719 million. St. Thomas and St. Olaf, two schools at the center of the story ironically, have near identical endowments of just under $500 million. From there, it drops considerably to St. John's with $180 million. Several others, including Hamlin and Augsburg, are below $100 million. It's safe to say that of the four schools with the largest endowments, St. Thomas has prioritized and achieved athletic success in addition to success in other areas more than the other three. If I were St. John's officials, I would be looking for a brand new conference or at least be prepared because it seems like some of the school's president's solutions to losing is kicking people out. I know that is harsh, but again, these schools did this in secret. St. Thomas had until last spring to figure out the next step and at the time it looked unclear on which way they would go. Estin told the Star Tribune, we need to assess all our options, take a look at what we think is best for St. Thomas, and work hard to receive an invitation to wherever that might be. All options that are available to us are on the table. They decided to stay at the Division III level, the Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Conference was open to adding the Minnesota Powerhouse. The league also considered joining the Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference, a Division II conference that had nine other 16 members located in the state of Minnesota. The issue with this solution was that Tommies could no longer play Division III hockey, and with no Division II hockey options, the men's and women's programs would be forced to compete at the Division I level. Originally, it looked like a move to Division I would be a 12-year process because the school would need to transition to the Division II level over three years, then stay there for five years, and then make the four-year transition to Division I. Then a little over a year after the news broke about the MIAC's decision, the NCAA granted permission to St. Thomas to move from Division III straight to Division I, we're going Division II and the 12-year process. St. Thomas wrote to their community saying, St. Thomas is the first university that has been approved to transition directly to Division I from Division III in the modern history of the NCAA. With this news, we enthusiastically accept invitation to join the Summit League for 19 of our 22 sports, as well as the Pioneer Football League, Central Collegiate Hockey Association for Men's Hockey, and the Western Collegiate Hockey Association for Women's Hockey. The funding for the transition to Division I will primarily come from philanthropy, incremental athletic revenue, and startup funds authorized by the Board of Trustees. The transition period will be managed in time to ensure the new expenses are phased in and do not dilute academic excellence in any way. Summit League Commissioner Tom Dolpo, eager to add the Twin Cities market, targeted St. Thomas for the conference and played a vital role in encouraging the NCAA to allow it. Big Ten member Minnesota is the state's only other full-fledged Division I program. The Tommies last season in the MIAC came in 2019. They finished as co-champions with an 8-2 record and 7-1 conference record. Due to the world events, the 2020 season was canceled. Like I mentioned previously, St. Thomas joined the Pioneer Football League, a non-scholarship FCS conference that currently covers eight states from California to Florida to New York. It includes the University of San Diego, as well as Dayton, Drake, Davidson, Marist, Stetson, Moorhead State, Butler, and Valparaiso. During the first season in the conference, they finished third in the conference, going 7-3. They lost to SCS Powerhouse Northern Iowa 44-3, San Diego 27-24, and Davidson 42-15, all of which were on the road. They finished with wins over Michigan Tech, Butler, Valparaiso, Stetson, Marist, Drake, and Presbyterian. This upcoming season, they will play out-of-conference games against Southern Utah, Michigan Tech, and Lincoln, California. The university did not have any plans for larger facilities at the time of the move, but would evaluate and raise the funding if need be. The Tommies will not be eligible for the FCS playoffs until the 2026 season due to the NCAA transition rules. Personally, I think St. Thomas's athletic journey has been a crazy one over the past few years, and I think it'll be interesting to watch how their program changes as they make the transition. But what do you think? Will St. Thomas be able to dominate the Pioneer League like they did with the MIAC? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more college football content, and check out one of my other videos right here. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.